Hello, we are going to uh, talk today about the tension test of steel. So as you can uh, see here, this is the ASTM designation, which is ASTM E8 and uh, tension. It's the title is tension testing of metallic materials in general. So it is for steel and aluminum as well. So the main purpose of this um, uh, experiment is to determine the stress-strain relationship uh, and the yield strains, the tensile strains, elongation and reduction of cross-sectional area uh, and the modulus of elasticity and rupture strains. So a lot of benefits that we are going to get or obtain from this experiment. The significance and use of this experiment, um, this test provides information on strengths and ductility for metals subjected to a uniaxial tensile stress. This is only for, as we said, it is for uh, like um, materials or uh, metals, uh, whether like steel, aluminum, something like this. Uh, this information may be useful in comparison of materials, alloy developments, quality control, design under certain circumstances and detecting non-uniformity and imperfections as indicated by the fracture surface. So these are the main uh, significance and use of this experiment. The apparatus that is going to be used for today or uh, the experiment, a testing machine capable of applying tensile load at a controlled rate of deformation or load. This is, we are going to use our UTM machine in our laboratory. The testing machine could be either mechanical or closed loop electrohydraulic. The uh, machine could uh, be equipped with a dial gauge to indicate the load or could be connected to a chart uh, or a chart recorder or computer to record load and deformation. So this is Actually, we are in our lab, we are using UTM machine, so it is going to be like automatic. Automatically, we are going to put and an install and make the setup, and then we are going to start the load rating. A gripping device used to transmit the load from the testing machine to the test specimen and to ensure axial stress within the gauge length of the specimen. This is important and different than the compression strengths or the compression. Uh, test before because here we want a gripping device a device that is making um, a, a kind of grip gripping for the element because it is like uh, as we are going to see here something like this so it is like needs to be gripped from above and from below so that we are sure that the stress or the tensile load is going through the main body of the specimen okay Okay, so um, this is a gripping device. After that, an ex, uh, extensometer, but, but actually we are, or LVDT, with an LVDT, uh, or dial gauge, we are going to use, our UTM machine is going to use, uh, or going to report for us the stress strain curve directly, and the piston above piston uh, for the gripping, um, it is going to, like, connect it with the computer, and it's going to record the stress and the strain simultaneously. So we want this dial gauge used to measure the deformations of the specimen, okay, uh, if needed, but we are not in need in, in all of this. Uh, caliper to measure the dimensions of the specimen, no need also for our case here uh, or for our experiment. Test specimen, either plate type or rounded specimen can be used as shown in the figure. This is the figures that you can see here. Uh, different type specimens are, are available for us. Rounded and plate type steel and aluminum tension test specimens. As you can see, it is, as we said, plate type, something like this or the, like this or this one, and or rounded type, like, like this one. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Specimen dimensions are specified in ASTM E8. You can refer to E8. Uh, ASTM E8, uh, you are going to find the specimen dimensions and we are going to show it actually also uh, in our video for tomorrow's class. So the test procedure, first of all, mark the gauge length on the specimen either by slight notches or with ink. This is something to get the length that you need. 
place the specimen in the loading machine as you can see this is in figure 316 it's not here but it is uh, yes it's not here so we are going to <coughs> see it in the UTM machine <coughs> Attach the ext um, the extensometer to the specimen, as you can see here. But also, we are not going to do so in our experiment for tomorrow, because as we said that the piston in the top and bottom they are going to record the stress and strain directly. So no need for us to make <clears throat> this um, uh, extensometer. So uh, we are not going to use it. Okay, uh, after that set the load reading to zero, then apply load at rate less than 690 kilopascal per minute. Okay, unless otherwise specified, any convenient speed of testing may be used up to half of the specified yield strength or yield point, or one quarter of the specified tensile strength, whichever is smaller. After the yield strength or yield point has been determined, the strain or maybe, sorry, the strain rate may be increased to a maximum of 0.5 inch per inch of the gauge length per minute. After that, we are going to continue applying the load until the specimen breaks. That's it. And after that, we are going to record load and deformation every 2.2 kN or 500 pounds increment for steel and every 980 N, 200 pounds increment for aluminum, both before and after the yield point. Analysis and results, we are going to um, calculate the stress and strain for each load increment until failure. We're going to plot the stress versus strain curve, and then we're going to determine the yield strength using the offset method, extension method, okay, or by observing the sudden increase in deformation. Actually, these two methods already I have explained, and I'm going to explain it tomorrow, actually, in the class, so in detail, okay. After that, calculate the tensile stress. This is going to be the P maximum over A node, where the uh, this sigma is the tensile strength in megapascal. P maximum is the maximum load carried by the specimen during the tension test. This is we're going to read it from you, our UTM machine. And A node, it is the original cross-sectional area of the specimen in millimeter squared. Then we're going to calculate the elongation, percent elongation. This is going to be equal to LS over L node over L node by 100% times 100, 100 this, this is going to be in percent. LS, it is the gauge length after rupture in millimeter. L node, it is the original gauge length in millimeter as well. For elongation larger than 3%, fit the ends of the fractured specimen together and measure LS as the distance between the two gauge marks. For elongation less than or equal to 3%, fit the fractured ends together and apply an end load along the axis of the specimen sufficient to close the fracture ends together. Then measure LS as the distance between gauge marks. Calculate the modulus of elasticity. It is going to be the stress over strain. This is the modulus of elasticity in megapascal. So we know it. And the stress, and this is the strain, the stress and the proportional limit in megapascal. And the epsilon is corresponding strain in millimeter per millimeter. Calculate the rupture strength. It is going to be PF over A node. Take care. PF over A node. So the sigma R, we call it rupture strength in megapascal. Okay. And PF, it is the final load, which is a newton. And A node, it is the original cross-sectional area in millimeter squared. Okay. Calculate the reduction of cross-sectional area. Percent reduction in cross-sectional area equal to A node minus AS over A node times 100. We know A node is the original one and this is the AS. It is the cross-sectional after rupture in millimeter squared. To calculate the cross-sectional after or the cross-section after rupture, fit the ends of the fracture specimen. Okay. And uh, of the fracture specimen together and measure the mean diameter or width and thickness at the smallest cross-section. This is the, the point. So uh, we are going to talk about the replacement of uh, specimen. This is an important issue sometimes we can, we can encounter. The test specimen should be replaced if. This is an important issue where that we are having like, uh, like 
a um, kind of issues during the test testing itself, then we need to replace the test specimen. The original specimen had a poorly machined surface. This is the first case. If the original specimen had wrong dimensions, if the specimen's properties were changed because of poor machining practice, the test or the test procedure was incorrect, for example, or the fracture was outside the gauge length, or for the elongation determination, the fracture was outside the middle half of the gauge length. These are the cases where that we need to replace the specimen. Uh, report at the end what you should do in your assignment in the report. You are going to report the stress-strain relationship, yield strength and the method used, tensile strength, elongation and original gauge length, modulus of elasticity, rupture strength, reduction of cross-sectional area. This ends our uh, experiment for today, which is uh, the ES ASTM um, uh, E8, which is the Tension testing of metallic materials. Thank you.